Hi, welcome to Introduction to Ethics. I'm Rob Loftus, and I'll be your instructor this term. The purpose of this video is to go over the highlights of the syllabus and the angel page for this course. It is not meant to be a substitute for reading the entire syllabus. However, it will point you toward the important parts of the syllabus you need to get rolling. So, this is a long Russian novel. This is the syllabus. See, it's much shorter than the Russian novel. You're much better off. I know the syllabus is long. However, it contains all the information you need to get every assignment done in this course. The most important thing you need to know going forward is that this is a web blended course. That means it is part online and part land-based. You must complete both the online and the land-based activities to pass the course. Also, before you do anything else in this course, you will need to take a quiz on the contents of the syllabus and score 100 points on it. This will unlock the rest of the content of this course. When you logged in, you probably saw this. The syllabus is down here. You got to this video by clicking here. And you probably saw a link to the video and the introductory forum and the syllabus quiz. You did not see these other folders down here. You will be able to see these folders when you score 100 points on the syllabus quiz. The syllabus quiz isn't hard. You can look at the syllabus while you're taking the quiz. The quiz does not change from time, from time to time that you take it. The point of the quiz is simply to ensure that you know everything you're getting into when you start the course. Let's take a look at the syllabus. My contact information is on the front, including e my email, office phone, and home phone. You can co either contact me through the Angel email or directly at my LC3 account. I promise to answer all email within 48 hours and generally answer within 24. Notice that my email address is jloftus at lorraineccc.edu, even though I go by Rob. They assigned me the name Jane, J. Loftus because my full name is James Robert Loftus, and they were just reading it off a of form. My name also appears as James in Angel, but please call me Rob. The course is divided into five sections, each lasting three weeks. These correspond with the five chapters of the book and the five main folders that will appear on Angel once you finish the syllabus quiz. Underneath the title for each section of the course, there are, date, there are the dates that the section runs. The syllabus on your screen now is just a sample. It doesn't have the actual dates filled in. For each section of this course, there will be an assortment of online and in-class activities that you will need to complete. First of all, there are readings, just like in any other class. These include both readings from the textbook and additional readings that are posted to Angel as PDF files. On top of that, in addition to the readings, there will be several videos that you have to watch. There will be some online exercises to complete, and there is a discussion forum for each section that you must participate in. Also, during each section of the course, there will be three class meetings. Again, the actual dates are on the syllabus. This is just a dummy. There will be a sign-in sheet for each class, and you, will be, and you will have to sign your name in order to get credit. It is your responsibility that you be sure to sign in. Let's take a look at the assignments now. You should flip to this section in your own syllabus. It's about 10 pages in. 
We have already said that we will be taking attendance, and there are online videos you have to watch. These are only 5% of your grade each. There are also online and in-class exercises, which are 10% of your grade. The main portions of your grade, however, are the discussion forums, quizzes, and a paper project. The paper will be 1,500 to 2,000 words long and have a first draft and a rewrite. The first thing you will be doing, though, is participating in the discussion forums, so let's look at those first. The description of the discussion forums should start around page 12 of your syllabus. There are five forums, one for each of the major sections of this course. You can post as many times as you want to each forum. This is the discussion forum here. Each time you post, I will award you points between 0 and 5. The syllabus contains a detailed description of how to write a post that will score you many points including examples of good and bad posts, and rules for basic web etiquette. Your final grade on the forum will be the total number of points that you scored times 10. So, if you post twice to the forum and score 5 points on each post, you will get a 100. Odds are, however, that you will get about 3 points per each post, so the average person will have to post 4 times to be sure to get 100. Because you can post as many times as you want, there's no reason not to keep going until you score a 100. This portion of your grade should be easy to make if you put in the effort. No one talking all by myself. No one walking. I'm happy on the show, babe. Ain't misbehaving. Saving my love. I'm saving love you. Really saving love you. The other thing I want to highlight in this video is the paper project, which includes a first draft and a final draft that are together 40% of your grade. The description of the paper should begin around page 18 of your syllabus. The paper is what we call an argument paper. It is not a research paper. All the information you need is in the textbook and the online materials. If you want to bring in outside information because you happen to know other things, that's fine. But you won't be graded on how much time you spend in the library gathering outside sources. You will be graded on the quality of your arguments. Sometimes argument papers are called opinion papers. I don't like that name because it's not enough just to have an opinion. You have to provide a reason the reader should agree with you. Argument papers are also sometimes called persuasion papers. I don't like that name either because it implies that any kind of fancy talk that would bamboozle people into agreeing with you would make a good paper. Really though, what you need, you need to do more than plead with people. You need to give a rational argument. The first thing you need to do with the paper project is to select a topic and thesis. You're going to want to start doing this early in the semester. Actually, the bulk of this huge syllabus, this Russian novel, um, consists of suggested topics for the paper. You don't have to pick one of these, but if you pick something else, I ask, you that, I ask that you run it by me first, just to be sure you're not running off the, the rails. Once you have selected a topic, you can get to work on the paper itself. As I said earlier, it should be between 1,500 and 2,000 words long. When you submit your paper, you need to do it to the Angel drop boxes. You can see the Angel drop boxes once you have unlocked all the folders by taking the syllabus quiz. Beneath the section folders, if you scroll down, you see the drop box here. Click on it. You can put the title of your paper here. Do not cut and paste your paper into this message body. That is just for little notes you want to send me. If you cut and paste your paper there, all the formatting will get screwed up. Instead, you should attach your paper here, using the button that says Attachments. I accept papers in Microsoft Word and OpenOffice formats. The day the paper is due, I ask you 
to both submit an electronic copy online for me to grade and bring a paper copy to class for the peer review exercises. Once you have submitted the papers, I will read them and return them with feedback so that you can do the paper rewrite. You will receive your paper within, with my comments at least two weeks before the rewrite is due. Your grade on the second draft will be based primarily on how well you respond to criticism, how well you manage to incorporate the suggestions into the new draft. One of the best the, one of the biggest ways to lose points on this assignment is to simply ignore comments made by me or the peer reviewer. So if you get comments saying that a paragraph doesn't work and you leave it exactly as it was, this can cost you major points on the final draft. As a part of the rewrite project, I need you to use the track changes feature on your word processor to keep track of the number of changes you will make. I will explain how to do this for Microsoft Word and OpenOffice in a second. You will be using the Track Changes feature to keep track of the number of words you add. To complete the assignment, you need to add at least 600 words to the paper. I'm not going to count how many words you delete. You can delete as many or as few as you think are needed, but you will need to add at least 600 new words. To activate Track Changes in Microsoft Word, simply hit Control, Shift, and E. If you are in Word 2003, your screen should look like this, and then this toolbar here will appear. This is the revising toolbar, and the fact that this is colored in indicates that you're in Track Changes mode. When you're in track changes mode, text you delete gets crossed out and text you add gets underlined. So this is just standard dummy text and I'm doing the, the thing that they do on the internet and graphic designers do where the made up text is uh, just in Latin. Now suppose I wanted to delete this um, and replace it with English. I highlight the text that I want to delete, right? just like you would with a regular word processor, and you hit delete, and boom, it's crossed out. Now I can write the English over here. Uh, no one desires the painful because it is painful. Uh, it's an old text from Cicero, actually, that is typically used by graphic designers. So that the new text is underlined. If I want to turn off the track changes feature, I can either hit control alt delete again, or I can just go to this button here and uncheck it. See, now changes I make don't show up. If you want to get the track changes toolbar here without um, hitting control shift and E, you can also go to view toolbars and track change uh, reviewing is the name of it. So there it's checked to indicate that I can see it. If you are working in Microsoft Word 2007 or later, it works the exact same way, except instead of having the revising toolbar, you have this ribbon up here. And this is the button that controls whether track changes is on or off. If you are using Open Office, there are two things you have to check. What you do is you go over here to Edit, and then you go down to Changes. You want two things um, to be checked off. First, you need Record Changes, and then you need Show Changes. Once both of these are checked off, you're in track changes mode. Now, mine defaults to show changes. Yours may or may not do that. But after that, things work the same, right? So I can highlight text and then um, delete it and put in a translation or, you know, say something else. No one desires pain because it is painful. Something like that. Okay, that is all we need to cover for this opening presentation. You will need to read over the rest of the syllabus in detail and take the syllabus quiz. In the meantime, 
drop by the introductory forum and introduce yourself. Thank you. This is going to be a fun semester.